network. Just... Hi, I'm Erin Racy, Adobe Education Leader with TAFE Queensland, and I'll be at 2021's Adobe Education Summit. I'll be involved in the 2021 Adobe Education Summit because I love being among the first to learn about Adobe's latest creative tools. I'm passionate about creativity and innovation in education. Adobe tools help me and my students to be imaginative, creative and innovative. I'll be involved in the 2021 Adobe Education Summit because it's a great way to engage with other creative educators. Hey everyone, it's Michael from Sydney and I'll see you at the APEC Adobe Education Summit. I love being inspired by teachers who use Adobe products and I love to find out the latest about the apps. This is a great way for me to connect and learn from creative educators right across Australia. I'm going for the practical, fun, challenging and creative experiences and to meet up with Adobe Educator mates of old and new to get that injection of creativity without the need for a needle or a mask. I'll be involved in the Adobe Summer because I love seeing what other educators are doing and then uh, being inspired to do the same. Adobe tools help my students and I be creative. I'm looking forward to seeing what other people around the world are doing with Adobe tools. I'm looking forward to learning new things so that I can use them in class with my students. Hi, I'll be coming to the Adobe Education Summit because it's a great way to meet other creative educators around the world in your own home and see what they're doing with their students. It's always inspiring. I love it. G'day everybody, Brett Falak is here getting ready for the APAC Adobe Education Summit. It's an excellent way to be inspired by creative educators. Adobe Education Summit is an awesome way to learn best practices from fellow like-minded educators in injecting creativity in the classroom. folks, it's Rob the Robot from the Adobe Education team here and I'd like to welcome all of you to the 2021 APAC Adobe Education Summit. Please introduce yourself in the chat and tweet about this event with the hashtag AdobeEDUCreative. Now here are your hosts, Dr. Tim Kitchen and Erin Raisky. Thanks, Rob, and welcome everyone to the APAC Adobe Education Summit coming to you live from Vimeo Livestream as well as the Adobe for Education YouTube channel. My name is Tim Kitchen and co-hosting with me is Adobe Education Leader Erin Raithke. Hi, Erin. Hi, Tim, and welcome everyone. It is great to have you all with us. So please use the chat feature within Vimeo Livestream or YouTube to say hi and tell us where you are from. While we're in the chat, while you're in the chat sharing a bit about yourself, we'd like to do an acknowledgement of country. We respect and honour Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander elders past, present and future, as well as all Indigenous people from the lands we reach out to during this event. We acknowledge their stories, traditions and living cultures. We acknowledge them as the first peoples in our lands, the first scientists and the first creatives, and we commit to building a brighter future together. Folks, we have over 700 teachers from 30, over 30 different countries who have registered for this event. And we have a great day of inspiring presentations planned for you based on the theme of creativity equals engagement. To help us explore this theme further, we are soon going to hear from members of the global Adobe education team based in the USA. Dr. Brian Johnsford, Adobe's Director for Education, Learning and Advocacy, will be sharing news about Adobe's global uh, education programs and initiatives. Matt Nimitz, Adobe's Principal Product Manager and General Manager of the Adobe Education Exchange, will be sharing an update about the Adobe Education Exchange. And Tacey Trowbridge, Adobe's Head of Global Education Programs, will close this first session with a presentation on Adobe's Education Thought Leadership Programs. Following Tacey's session, we'll be having the first of a set of 30-minute breaks throughout the day. Our plan is to have a 30-minute break after each hour of content. Following our first break, Dr. Kitchen and I will be running a special session on Adobe's low lift and high impact tools. Adobe's creativity tools that any teacher or student can work with to drive creativity and engagement, even if they are new to the world of Adobe applications. Dr. Kitchen and I will be focusing on Adobe Spark. 
Then we'll be joined by Adobe Education Leader, Kev Lavery, who'll be running a demo session on Premiere Rush. And Adobe Education Leader, Michelle Dennis, will be sharing about Adobe tools that aid the design thinking process. At 12 noon Eastern time, which is 10 o'clock for Western Australia and much of Southeast Asia, we will commence a set of classroom success stories led by Adobe Education Leaders. Each classroom success story will feature a representative from K-12 and from higher education with a focus on why the use of Adobe's creativity tools have led to greater levels of engagement and therefore better learning outcomes. The first of these classroom success stories will be from Adobe master teacher, Juliet Bentley from Mount St. Michael's College in Brisbane. And she'll be joined by our co-host, Erin Raithke from TAFE Queensland and Brett Kent from the New South Wales Department of Education's Technology for Learning team, and their classroom success story will be based around the use of Adobe Spark. Then Ali Blackwell from Melville Senior High School in Perth will be joined by Craig Delmeyer Power from TAFE New South Wales, and their classroom success story will be based around the use of Adobe InDesign. To round off the first set of classroom success stories, Dr. Max Sleesha from Swinburne University, Mel Muller from Mountain Creek State High School in Queensland, and Brett Kent from the New South Wales Department of Education will share about the use of some of Adobe's virtual reality and augmented reality tools. Then at 1.30 p.m. for Eastern States and 11.30 a.m. for WA and Southeast Asia, following a break, we will continue the classroom success stories. Adobe Education Leader Joel Ahrens from Camberwell South Primary School in Melbourne and Adrian Brook from SAE Creative Media Institute will be sharing classroom success stories based on the use of Adobe Photoshop. Mark Wazowski from TAFE New South Wales and Emma Wise from Kerry Kerry High School in New Zealand will be sharing their classroom success stories based on the use of the amazing Adobe After Effects app. Then Michelle Dennis from Halebury College and Craig Dalmeyer Power from TAFE New South Wales will finish off the classroom success stories with a focus on Adobe XD, the design thinking tool. To finish off this day, JB Tinker from Certiport will share a presentation about Adobe certification. Then Clara Galan, Adobe's head of global education community programs, will be joining us all the way from Barcelona to share some closing comments. It's going to be a great day of professional learning and inspiration. Thanks for being part of the 2021 APAC Adobe Education Summit. Please share questions and comments in the chat and tweet about this event with the hashtag Adobe EDU Creative. Thanks, Rob. Now let's welcome Dr. Brian Johnsford to the stage. Brian, it's great to have you join us all the way from San Francisco. Brian, for Hello, those who haven't been with you before, let us just tell us what it's like, what it actually means to be Adobe's Director of Education, Learning and Advocacy. Sure. Um, uh, myself and my team uh, focus on the kinds of resources that educators and students need to be set up for success in classrooms. So that includes okay. everything from video tutorials, uh, self paced courses projects, lesson plans, activities, rubrics, uh, most of which you can find on the Adobe Education Exchange. Well, we're looking forward to your presentation, Brian. We're going to disappear and hand it straight over to you. Thanks. Um, for folks watching live, please do use the chat um, for questions or comments or inspiration that comes up as I'm speaking. Uh, and some questions uh, then will show up on the bar below and I'll leave some time at the end to uh, respond to some of the questions and ideas that you all have. Um, but to kick us off, uh, you'll be hearing after me from my colleague Matt Nemitz, uh, who's the general manager and product manager for the Adobe Education Exchange. Um, so he builds and designs all of the really cool uh, features and functionality and design of the site. Um, what I want to focus on is some of the content, uh, content and curriculum that's on the site. Um, so now in its uh, uh, sort of 10th birthday, uh, the Adobe Education Exchange has amassed an incredible amount of content, uh, over 10,000 lesson plans, projects, and activities, over 30 self-paced courses and professional learning kits, um, and an incredible amount of uh, teachers and educators on the site. So what I thought I'd share with you all is uh, letting you know a little bit more about what's on the Education Exchange for those of you who are uh, newer to the edX. Uh, and for those of you who have been 
uh, edX fans for years uh, to share a little bit uh, more detail about some of the updates we've been making, um, some of the new content that we've been adding, uh, and the sort of feedback we've been hearing from educators like you that have um, really made us excited to make those changes. Um, so I'll dive into some of the highlights now. The first is uh, not just in the new resources that uh, we've been making, um, and by making, I really mean co-creating with educators. Uh, <clears throat> we've been uh, making a lot of updates to make them more flexible. And what we've been hearing from uh, educators is both flexible in the ways in which the content is created. Um, so instead of just PDFs, uh, also providing file types like Google Docs that allow flexibility, like being able to use tools like Google Translate. Um, we've been adding modifications for distance and remote learning. So making updates where if a project or activity references, you know, students collaborating in, in real time in a classroom, um, we'll add suggestions for it. But if you're using video conference or other tools, here's how you can easily adapt or modify this for hybrid or remote instruction. Um, we've also been uh, really focusing on less very content specific projects, especially in subjects like math, science, or history, uh, and really creating more instructional strategies where kind of the pedagogy and the kinds of thinking and creativity you want students to do will paint a picture in some of our activities of how this could work for a specific topic in science, but really trying to empower you all to say, you can swap out that scientific topic or you can adapt it for a different grade level. Or if it's a project, for instance, about video, the example might be Spark, um, but you could also use that for Rush. You could even go deeper for Premiere Pro. So really making sure that uh, the activities that we have are as flexible and adaptable um, as possible, both for different countries, but also for individual uh, schools or even individual teachers or classrooms um, where they really want to make sure everything is exactly customized to what they want to do. The other thing uh, you'll notice that we've been working on lately is uh, a lot of um, courses uh, and professional learning uh, uh, toolkits on the education exchange. Um, so just like our teaching resources, these courses feature uh, experts like you'll see Juliet Bentley in the bottom right there, um, really sharing their tips and tricks and practical guidance from the classroom. Um, and the variety of teachers that we have in our courses for me is very exciting because they're from different countries and geos, different grade levels, different subject areas. So you can usually find someone who's teaching uh, tips and tricks from someone who's teaching your subject area grade level, but it can be so inspiring actually to, to hear what the science teacher across the hall is doing um, and to really create those cross-curricular or interdisciplinary connections. Um, the other thing that we've been doing in our courses is really being pedagogy forward. Um, and yes, we talk about how the tools uh, come to play, but really it's about the pedagogy, the instructional strategy, and the student success, and then just choosing the appropriate tool to help get you there. Um, one thing to note about our courses is they're all uh, self-paced. You can go at your own pace. Uh, most of them have assignments that you can then submit and get feedback and a badge um, to sort of certify that you've completed the course. One nuance we've added is a second kind of professional learning besides self-paced courses um, that we're calling professional learning toolkits. And what we're responding to here is we know a lot of you spend uh, some of your time or maybe your whole job is actually training other teachers on how to use Adobe tools successfully in the classroom. And so similar to what we've been doing in our self-paced courses, we wanted to make your lives easier by making these professional learning toolkits that uh, represent best practices we've seen in the classroom, created by teachers uh, and trainers like you, pedagogy forward, and really the spirit is to save you time. Um, because I used to lead a lot of <laughs> training and professional development for teachers and everything from the email invite to the slides, to the activities and the facilitator checklist, we know that that can take a lot of time and why reinvent the wheel. Um, so we've uh, created these uh, PL toolkits with invitation templates, an agenda template, slide decks, handouts, and just like our new curriculum materials, it's all editable. So you can take them as their uh, Google Doc or Google Slide formats, export to Word, export to PowerPoint, 
um, and change and adapt them for your own local circumstances. Uh, another exciting thing that uh, we built last year and got such positive feedback and requests for more are things that we call creative Kickstarters. And the feedback we've uh, been responding to here is educators saying, we love the large projects, um, the multi-week or multi-section scaffolded uh, projects, but sometimes we're also just looking for something quick and easy, just like a fun 20 minute or 30 minute or one hour activity where a student can pop into Spark or pop into Acrobat or pop into um, Photoshop um, and quickly with guidance create something really cool. Um, so smaller learning activities. So that's the spirit of Creative Kickstarters. Uh, we started with about 12 last year and uh, for this year for Back to School we added uh, a lot more including Acrobat, Spark and some other popular tools. Uh, we've also, uh, for those of you who have been in the community for a while, we do a lot of challenges, some based uh, for specific regions, some that are global challenges. Um, and a lot of our challenges we run live and have an end date. Um, and schools and teachers have asked us, can those challenges be self-paced? Can we actually have those materials and you rerun a challenge from last year? Or maybe make tweaks to those challenge challenges so they can work for things we're trying to do in our school. Um, so we've been adapting a lot of our most popular challenges like Minecraft and Spark and Box or our Save the Ocean challenge and putting on the education exchange so you can always return to and discover those materials and like everything I've been mentioning before, edit and adapt them so that they can work um, regardless of your context. The next thing that we've been creating and that you can um, learn about, especially in our edX newsletters, is with all of the content that we have, uh, requests for uh, us and partners to do some curation, um, to create sort of thematic bundles or collections um, for specific topics to sort of find the best content um, that fits for different um, use cases. Uh, so we call these curations. Uh, and here's an example where uh, this specific curation is if you're trying to teach writing um, at any grade level. And then we've gone a bit deeper and broken it into, well, if specifically you're trying to develop creative writing skills, here's some great activities with a variety of grade levels, tools, and topics uh, that we suggest. Um, the other example is here now, if you're teaching nonfiction writing across genres and styles, some other activities on that theme. Uh, the other thing I'll note is we continue to grow our YouTube channel, uh, which many of you might even be watching this live stream or on-demand video on at this moment. Uh, we first launched our YouTube channel, Adobe for Education, last summer. Uh, and it continues to grow. We add all of our video tutorials from our edX self-paced courses, courses which are for teachers. Those are all on our YouTube channel, and there's playlists that match up with the name of the course. Um, and one exciting thing that we've seen teachers do is then take those videos in this very shareable or embeddable format um, and add those videos to their learning management systems, um, sometimes to create courses or modules for other teachers or to share them directly with students. Because if you're taking a course on edX and you see a great tutorial for how to use a feature in Rush, why not grab that tutorial and share it with your students as well? Um, so be on the lookout for updates on our YouTube channel. Um, and very excitingly, uh, we launched our new Instagram channel today, I believe. So that's also very exciting. Um, we also have sort of updated the style and approach to our education exchange newsletters, um, including uh, we've upped the cadence um, and really telling you not just about new courses and teaching resources, but um, our new research, our new customer stories, uh, other events happening at Adobe that uh, we think would be interesting to you all. Um, and with this little link, you can also see an archive of past newsletters. So if you have in your memory, a few months ago, I remember Adobe was saying something about a social justice curation. You can search your emails, but you can also just see an archive of all of our past newsletters and all of the content that we shared there. And last but not least, uh, we continue to have a number of really exciting partnerships. Um, some of our partnerships are uh, product-based, where we're creating integrations with, say, learning management systems and with Spark. Uh, but we also have some really exciting curriculum and pedagogy partnerships. 
Um, and the one that I've been uh, most excited about the past few months is our partnership with Khan Academy. Um, so I'm sure uh, many of you have heard about Khan Academy. If you haven't used it, it's a global nonprofit, um, just about 11 years old, with a mission to create um, a world-class education for anyone, anywhere. Um, I actually used to work at Khan Academy uh, before joining Adobe. Uh, we are very, very excited as of May to have become Khan Academy's official creativity partner um, and to help teachers and students blend that core academic content, especially in different subject areas, with skills and tools like creativity and communication and collaboration that Adobe does so well. So as part of this partnership, uh, when we announced in May, we created a self-paced course on the Education Exchange Teach Creativity with Adobe and Khan Academy. One of the things I love about it is we break it down by different skills. There's lessons based off of different subject areas. And we really talk about, you know, stepping back from Khan Academy and Adobe, just the conceptual pedagogical opportunity to, to combine disciplinary skills with creative skills. But then to uh, really show how these things come together, we created over 100 lessons and activities where we show you an example of an instructional strategy where you can start with a Khan Academy video, say, on math, and then open up Adobe Spark and have students demonstrate their understanding or get practice in conceptual mathematical thinking using tools like Adobe Spark. Um, we, we're so excited for this partnership and the things that are coming up. In the weeks and months ahead, you're going to see new challenges for teachers and students that Adobe and Khan Academy are creating together. Um, you're also going to start seeing some content for teachers and for students on Khan Academy, co-created with Adobe to really make sure that while you're learning on Khan Academy, you're also getting exposure as a student and a teacher to those essential creative skills and really cool testimonials from people in different careers talking about how, for instance, I'm a scientist and I needed to know the scientific knowledge to do my job well, but I also need to be a great communicator. And when I'm designing an experiment, I also really need to be a creative thinker. So stay tuned for that. Um, it's a really exciting partnership that's just going to keep growing. And for those of you who are attending Adobe Max next month. Uh, we also have some uh, talks, including with uh, Sal Khan, the, the founder and CEO of Khan Academy, who will be one of our featured speakers at Max. So that's it for me. Uh, I'll pass it back to the hosts and see if we have any questions in the chat pod. Thank you so much, Brian. That was wonderful. And uh, it's always great to hear the amazing initiatives that are happening through the global Adobe education team. Just about every month there seems to be some new initiative and it's always great to keep us on our toes and keep us excited and interested in what we're doing. Erin, there's been quite a bit of discussion in the chat. Yes. Brian, I'm going to encourage you as soon as we've finished your session to jump into Vimeo mm -hmm. live stream so you can contribute to those conversations. Erin, what would you like to share about what's, what some of the highlights are? Well, we have a lot of... Um, like interpersonal talk, there is questions about whether or not, uh, Brian, you're able to share the slides with everybody. Um, I, I think they're, they're pretty keen to, to grab all of those lovely links that you took the time to place in there. Um, and Suze Arnott shares that edX is one of the most satisfying ways to learn, which I think is a lovely oh. compliment. And, oh, and she also says, certainly not resting on their laurels. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, now let's just have a bit of a look. Yeah, mostly everyone's saying hello, but I'm sure that there'll be a bit of direct chatter once you jump into the chat. Thank you so much for your time, Brian. Yeah. Thanks, Brian. We'll uh, look forward to hopefully seeing you face to face next year. Who knows, you might be able to come down to Australia and join us if we're able to go face to face. And we really uh, appreciate I'd love it. nothing more. Fingers crossed. Good on you. Thanks, Brian. I hope you are enjoying the 2021 APAC Adobe Education Summit. Please share questions and comments in the chat and tweet about this event with the hashtag AdobeEDUCreative. Adobe well, let's welcome Matt Nemitz, Adobe's Principal Product Manager and General Manager of the Adobe Education Exchange, all the way from Atlanta, Georgia, in the United States of America. 
In July, we celebrated the one millionth member of Adobe Education Exchange. Sorry to steal your thunder, Matt. Uh, <laughs> congratulations, though, on this amazing milestone. Thank you to both Tim and Aaron for having me. It's, it's uh, always a pleasure to be here and participate in this event. Well, Matt, we're looking forward to what you have to share. We will disappear and leave it over to you. Great. Well, good morning, everyone. Thanks uh, so much for having me. Like I said, it's it's, uh, it's always a pleasure to speak to this group, and um, I love hearing your stories and uh, learning from Tim and others about what the work that you all are doing in the Asia Pacific region. It's such an area of strength for us, uh, and we are always inspired back here in the United States uh, to see the work that you're doing. Um, as Tim said, my name is Matt Nemitz. I'm a product manager on the Adobe Education uh, Creative Cloud for Education team. And I work with a group of product managers, designers, engineers, uh, and then in partnership with folks like Brian and Tacey, who you'll hear from in a minute, uh, to really create products and experiences that help you all use Adobe tools more effectively in your classroom. And the, the main product that I work on is the Education Exchange. But we have a ton of other stuff going on within our team, and I'm happy to answer questions or um, talk a little bit about that if you're interested in the chat pod afterwards. Um, but today I wanted to focus on the Education Exchange, and as, uh, as Aaron mentioned, we just hit 1 million members in July, which was an amazing milestone. Um, I've been working on this product for quite a while, and so it's, it was really uh, satisfying to see us reach that milestone. And it's a big number, but what it means really is that we have a million people around the world who are really passionate about creativity in, in their classrooms. And so that and the, the way that you're reaching your students with creativity and you're engaging them in new ways is really what makes that number so remarkable. Um, and I wanted to thank you for your efforts there and for partnering with us uh, on that mission. It, it means a lot to have you uh, working with us. Um, the Education Exchange has been around for about 10 years. It's really evolved a lot over the years. And you can see, um, a, like I'm sharing my screen and kind of showing the, the latest version of it. And about a year ago, or maybe about a year and a half ago, I guess, we started on a new journey to really reimagine the Education Exchange and figure out like, hey, what, what does the future for it look like? How do we meet the needs of more educators? We, we've been seeing, you know, among these million members, there are teaching all kinds of different subjects across all kinds of different age levels um, and with different products that Adobe offers. And so it's, it's a very diverse audience. And it's always been hard to, to figure out how do we meet the needs of so many different people. Um, and so about a year ago, we launched a whole new backend platform, um, which ho hopefully if you've, if you've been around in the education exchange for a while, you actually didn't really notice other than maybe it got a little bit faster. But since we have that new backend system in place, we've been able to build a whole bunch of new front end user experiences. And we're on this kind of two year, two to three year journey to redesign the entire education exchange. And, and as I said, really make it more user friendly, easier to find the kind of content you're looking for. And this has all been in response to the feedback that we've gotten from you all, from other educators like you, um, about how we can make the education exchange work better for you. Uh, one of the guiding principles that we had is to save you all time. We know that you don't have a lot of it. And, um, and, so, and so we want to be respectful of that and mindful of that and know that the, 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 the quickest ways to get you to the content you're looking for, to the learning experiences, to the teaching resources, to the ways to connect with other educators, uh, the more time that you have to you know, introduce these new ideas and tools into your classroom and work well with your students. Uh, to make sure that they get the outcomes that you're looking for for them. Uh, so what I thought I would talk a little bit about today is, is, is kind of what we've been up to over the last year, give you a bit of a tour of the education exchange. Hopefully you're, you're somewhat familiar with it. Um, and you've now heard from Brian about all the amazing content on the education exchange. And so how do you use it? How do you make the most of it? Uh, and so it really starts with this, this homepage. Um, and if you've seen the education exchange prior to last month, like early August, uh, it looked really different back then. And we just launched in, in mid-August this new redesigned experience. Uh, the homepage is new. We have a brand new main navigation that really, I think, better articulates what the education exchange is all about. And I mentioned these three things of teaching resources. So this is a lot of that content that Brian was just mentioning, the lesson plans and projects. 
Uh, then we have professional learning, which is the home for those self-paced courses and toolkits. And in the future, other ways we might think about um, providing uh, learning opportunities for you all. And then community is really you all. It's it's the the profiles of who you are and the um, the picture of of who this community really is, as well as discussions and places where you can collaborate with others and you know ask questions and get kind of real time answers from the the community of educators that has done some of the same things that you have. Um, and, and so within this teaching resources homepage here, we, we had a couple of goals. One, we really wanted to surface the best content and feature that content that uh, is driving, you know, is, is heavily used by educators, gets great feedback from you all, and um, has been proven to be useful in terms of helping uh, educators and students use the tools in your classroom. And so we have highlighted some of the feature, feature teaching resources here in this top section uh, we also have a place below where Brian and his team can curate content and showcase some of the, the new and upcoming things that, that we're working on, uh, have more thematic sections of content. So you can, he talked about that partnership that we have with Khan Academy. Uh, this is a place where you can find out more about that. And then at the bottom, um, again, this is sort of a revolving area where we want to highlight, you know, different, different, uh, sections or, or curations of content. So here are some uh, some higher education projects. But you can expect that these parts of the homepage will will change frequently. We'll highlight new things um, that, are, that we've just created or more thematic things that might be revolving around a topic or an event that might be happening in the world. So one example of that is we have a collection of social justice resources. And so for, um, you know, Black History Month here in the United States, we might highlight that and we can do other things for other parts of the world. So this is a great way for you to come back, great place for you to come back to kind of see what's new and, and check out the latest that Brian and his amazing team have been creating. Not to mention the the, the users that are contributing content. Uh, many of you probably have done that. Uh, and so it's a great place for us to share the work that you all are doing as well. The second goal that we had was to quickly help you get into the, the new search experience, which I'll show in a minute. Um, we know that there's a lot of content going back to that theme I mentioned earlier of how do you find the content that's that you're looking for? And if you're teaching a particular subject at a particular age level, um, you know that's probably the content you're interested in. So how do we help you find that as quickly as possible? Um, we have a couple of ways to do that. One is through this search bar in the main navigation. So from anywhere on the education exchange, you can easily search. Uh, but we're also, uh, this is the first step in a journey toward helping guide you into the content. And um, it's actually kind of a, a common misconception that it, it, the Adobe Education Exchange just has digital media and art resources. When in fact, we have content for humanities, for social sciences, for science and math and other subjects. And so uh, these, what we call search pods, help educators who might be new very quickly get into the content that they um, are most interested in. And so if I click on something like humanities, you can see that I'm directly entered into the new search experience. This is another, um, uh, com looks completely different and is much more modern and user-friendly. We've adopted some of the kind of common uh, user experience paradigms from all across the web, but also from specifically from Adobe and the way that we as a company author these kinds of experiences. Um, one of the most amazing things is that you can now search across all of edX. So all of the teaching resources, all of the professional learning courses and toolkits, all of the discussions with one search. So if you're looking for a specific, you know, if you have a specific keyword query, you can run that query and see content across all three of those different areas. You can also filter by subject. Of course, we have uh, not just humanities as a whole, but you can go deeper into history or language and literature, philosophy, et cetera. You, you, you get the idea. Same thing with the products. We have um, a you know, fair number of products here at Adobe, and you might be interested in a specific one and how you can teach you know, with Photoshop or with InDesign or with Spark. Um, you can easily filter by those different products. And then finally, age level and student time. Actually, student time is new, where you know you have a again on that theme of you have a limited amount of time. 
if you only have an hour to teach with Adobe tools in your classroom, you can find lessons and projects that uh, will only take less than an hour to teach. So that's another way of, you know, again, just quickly finding the kind of content that you might be looking for. Um, I'll briefly show the professional learning page. Brian talked about these amazing courses that he and his team have developed for you all. I know many of you have been engaged with these. It's been amazing to see um, the learning that you are doing with each other. Uh, this creativity for all courses is one that I will highlight as a great way to get started with Adobe and to become a part of the Adobe Creative Educator community. I'm sure that many of you have already uh, been engaged with that. We have almost 40,000 educators that have enrolled in that course. Um, and then Brian also mentioned these toolkits here at the bottom uh, of this page where you can access those if you're interested in, in uh, getting resources to train other educators in your school or district. Um, so those are some of the new things we we have done. You know, this all of this that I just mentioned launched back in August. So we were working on that project for for quite a while. Uh, before then, we worked on a project, and I'll show you uh, here about how, redesigning this teaching resource page. Um, and again, we had these same kind of goals of of really making the education exchange easier to use. And, and Brian talked about uh, the content side of that of how do you um, you know, take this content and adapt it to your classroom? How, how are we making that content more flexible? And that was also one of the principles that we had in, in building and designing this page. And so I'll call out a few things like, number one, the, the design that makes it much easier for you to evaluate this content, to quickly skim it and, and quickly, you know, know, hey, is this the right thing for me based on the subjects, the, the age level, the tags that uh, the author of it has put on the content itself? Uh, the second thing is to be able to sort of preview it, right? Like get a, but get a good sense of what's in this content without having to download a whole bunch of files. And so you can see we have added this like PDF previewer here where you can quickly scan through uh, this project. Uh, this is a PDF that Brian and his team created, but it's also a, a web link as a Google Doc. And so you can open that Google Doc and copy it and make changes and then share it with other teachers and share it with your students. We also, when you um, download this package of resources, you have the option of sending them to Google Drive or to OneDrive. Uh, and this is a way for us to, or, or to download to your own you know, local device. But this is a way, if, you know, we know that educators, students are using these cloud uh, storage services. And that's often the place where you're both storing your files and then sharing them with other people. And so why not just allow you to directly send to Google Drive or OneDrive? Um, this is a great place to segue into kind of where we're headed with the education exchange, because what we want to do moving forward is really continue down this theme of making it easier for you to use this content in your classroom. Um, and part of that is we think connecting it better to the overall user journey that you have. Um, and that starts with, you know, discovering an idea and, and that might be on the education exchange. It might be from a colleague that's given you an idea. It, it, it moves on to, you know, making sure that you have access to the Adobe tools, you know, whether that's Spark or Creative Cloud. Um, and, and then like putting this great content that you can find on the education exchange to use in your classroom. And so we're exploring things like how do we um, allow you to send this content to a learning management system and quickly create an assignment from the education exchange that you can then give to your students. Uh, again, we want to speed up that process for you and, and integrate into the classroom tools that you're already using. Uh, and then another theme that we have is, is uh, and this is both on the content and on the product side, is, is thinking about like starter content or templates or how do we you know provide that you know, that starting point for you and for your students. We know that students are, you know, can be a little overwhelmed or intimidated by that, you know, blank canvas, uh, whether that's in Spark or Photoshop or anywhere else. And so uh, a template can be a great way for them to get started. It can be a great way for you as educators to provide guidance for your students. And so we're going to be exploring, number one, how do we create more of those templates for you? And number two, um, how do we then make them easily discoverable. And then part of those workflows that I was mentioning earlier, finding it on the education exchange, assigning it to your students. 
Um, this is all sort of in the discovery phase at the moment. We're you know kind of exploring these ideas and um, and working through how we might uh, make them happen for you all. Uh, so those are those are sort of some of the the that's one of the main themes. And then the other theme I'll mention moving forward is you know if I go back to the homepage here is when I when you're a logged in user and we know a little bit about who you are, whether you know what you're teaching, what age level, what subject. Uh, we want to personalize the experience here, and we want to make it really easy for you uh, to quickly get back to the content that's relevant for you, for us to recommend things that we think are going to be um, you know, most relevant and you know, kind of reduce the noise of all the other stuff that might be happening. And this is both from you know, on the education exchange itself and then also in the way that we communicate with you. Brian mentioned the newsletters that we send out. Um, everybody gets the same newsletter, but what what would it look like for us to start sending you emails that recommend specific content that uh, we think you might be interested in? So that's another kind of theme going forward as we continue to evolve the education exchange and make it a, um, a platform that's, that's really useful to you all. Um, on that note, we really love to hear from you all, right? We want to hear the ideas that you have, what's working, what's maybe not working, what could be a little bit better. Uh, so I'm going to throw my contact information in the in the chat pod so that you can reach out. You know, tell us what you think. Uh, we we thrive off of hearing user feedback, uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly. I promise that we won't be offended by what you have to say. So please be honest and candid with us. It really is the best way for us to make sure that we're meeting your needs. And you know, as I said in the beginning, enabling you to do this amazing work of of uh, integrating creativity into your classroom and seeing your students flourish with uh, with their creative expression. Um, so with that, I'm, I'm also very happy to answer questions that might have popped up in the chat, in the chat pod. And um, we'll, I guess, hand it off back to Tim and Aaron. Thanks, Matt. Look, just one quick question from me before I throw it to Aaron to see what else has been happening in the chat. Um, I'll get you to share or share your screen again in a, in a sec, Matt. I wanna, if you can quickly go through the process of how to create a resource how a, if, if a teacher's got something they really would like to share on the education exchange as being an exchange, can you go through that process with us? Sure. Yeah, let's see here. Am I still? Yeah, there we go. Okay. So to do that, you have a profile and you click up here in this new drop down menu and you can go to my education exchange and then click here under the teaching resources to create a new resource. You can see some of my fun test resources there when I was testing the platform. And we've actually, yeah, we've redesigned, whoops, we've redesigned this entire experience back in March. And it's a much more user-friendly and kind of guided experience to help you not just add your content, but add it in such a way that's going to be really compelling to other users, that is complete and accurate and, um, you know, contains all of the right tags and metadata. And that sounds kind of boring, but it's important because it makes sure that other educators can find the great work that you've done. So uh, um, he, that's how you get to this, this experience. And then hopefully once you get there, it's really self-explanatory to just follow the steps and add the information about your content and then share it with the world. So Matt, that first step is to go to the profile, is it, at the top right-hand corner? That's right. Yep. And then right go to my, my education exchange. Yep. That's fantastic. Thank you, Matt. I'm going to bring Erin up to the stage now. Erin, tell us about some of the conversations that were happening in the background. No worries, Tim. Well, we do have a few comments in here. One of them is um, from um, Hannah and Hannah saying, I'm interested in Adobe professional certification, so keen for any more information. And we'll leave that... Um, for you to share more details in the chat, unless you have a brief spiel for that now. Yeah, so we, I mean, we have a lot of different certification programs. Um, there's the Adobe uh, Creative Educator, which is, you know, a certification in, in one sense um, a, as a way for you to express your interest in creativity in the classroom. We also have the Adobe Certified Professional Program, which actually Tacey is going to be speaking next, and she is the yeah. best person to talk about that program. And it sounded like there was someone from CertiPort coming as well later in the mm -hmm. day. So I would encourage you to listen in on that part of the session to learn more yeah. about that certification. 
Absolutely, you're absolutely right. That's in our final session for today. Um, lots of nice things being said as well. Um, Juliet Bentley is very excited about the prospect of direct access to an LMS. Uh, Bronwyn says, these lessons are fantastic. Educators have a whole new world to explore in the Adobe Ed Exchange. Um, and Timothy Cosgrove says, Adobe edX is a much improved interface with so many creative resources for the time conscious educator. Nice. So uh, it's a lovely note to finish on. Thank you so much. Thank you all. It's a pleasure being here. We really appreciate the time that you've put mm -hmm. into prepping for us. And you've been involved in every summit that we've had ever since we started the summits <laughs> years ago. And in fact, you've even been out to Sydney too. Uh -huh. to Couple maybe, of times. One day, maybe one day that'll happen again but thank you again Matt. thank you i hope you are enjoying the 2021 apac adobe education summit please share questions and comments in the chat and tweet about this event with the hashtag adobe edu creative Hi, Tacey. Tacey Trowbridge. Oh, Tacey, I've got a quick question for you that is totally off script here. <laughs> what's, been, what's been the absolute highlight of your Adobe career so far? Oh, Tim, obviously it's visiting you in Australia and attending these previous summits. <laughs> That's correct, Dan. So I was going to accept that. I was going to accept the fact that you employed me. And obviously that's a natural cue for us. So it is actually really great to have you back with us at this particular event. Thank you so much for joining us. What a pleasure. I love speaking to the Australian educators and educators from all around APAC. It's such an honor to get to, to share with you some of our work. All right, we will disappear and we're gonna share your screen and we're looking forward to your presentation, Tacey. Fantastic. Well, I am lucky to be able to follow both Brian and Matt and to share with you some of the work that we're doing that's about why. Why do we have the education exchange and all this content? And really, we are focused on how can we best improve student outcomes? I am going to talk to you today about our thought leadership and our advocacy work and share with you some of the things that we're doing around the world. Uh, this is our general statement about our thought leadership in education, that we see it as critically important that the next generation is empowered to reach their full potential, whether they are going into the world of work or as citizens, or simply solving some of the real challenges that we're facing today. And we think that the best place for students to be prepared for this is, is, part of the, is in their education. We really see it as critically important that students are taught essential creative and digital literacy skills in the classroom that these are the skills that will open doors for them in the future and prepare them for a rapidly changing world. We also know that educators and educational institutions need allies as they reinvent themselves to meet these critical, these critical needs in a changing world. Our mission in education is threefold. It's first about empowering creativity for all and making sure that students and educators are able to communicate effectively uh, to create new things, to solve problems. We're also focused on cultivating digital literacy and preparing the, the next generation to communicate in the way in which the world communicates today. And then finalized, finally, we're working on modernizing the education experience. We've done a lot of research over the last 10 years that help us understand the way in which creativity and digital literacy are valued and as they're tied to student success. We've done several surveys with students asking students, do they see creativity as important? And they strongly see this as important to solving the problems that we're facing as a, as a globe. They also see that creativity is a skill that will help them in their careers as they move forward in advance. They talk about also that the best way for them to learn is through creating and through doing, which is no surprise to, to the educators here. Then we've also conducted surveys and listened carefully to educators and policymakers who articulate the importance of these skills and they see them as being important for success not only in school but also upon graduation. 97% uh, say that creative skills need to be learned in school and they also say that students who excel at creative skills will ultimately land higher paying jobs and have more opportunities for advancement. And we did a study a couple of years ago where we looked at 2 million job postings and 2 million resumes to try to understand what are the skills that really matter. And we saw that three quarters of these job postings 
included both creativity and communication skills as critically important. And these are skills, uh, and these were job postings across all different kinds of industries. We chose rapidly growing industries, including things like healthcare or data science, uh, and, and any industry that was growing quickly, hiring new folks who wanted to know if creativity mattered to them. What we also heard is that students wish there was more of a focus on creativity, that educators and policymakers agree that there's not enough emphasis on these skills in today's curriculum. And while, while three quarters of the resumes sought creativity and communication skills, three quarters, I'm sorry, three quarters of the job postings sought these skills, three quarters of the resumes didn't include them. So there's certainly lots of room for us to continue to improve the way in which students are prepared, the kinds of opportunities they have, and the skills that they bring with them into the workforce. We know from the World Economic Forum, in their, their 2015 report highlighted creativity. They've released their 2020 Future of Jobs study, uh, predicting the skills that will be important in 2025. See on this list, top skills that will be rooted in creative and digital literacy skills and really critical for student success, not just now, but in the future. I wanted to talk a bit about our advocacy work. In addition to trying to make it easy for educators to teach creativity, to try to provide students with tools that help them be successful, we're also focused on advocating for policy that supports these initiatives, for research that supports these initiatives, and then for funding as well. And so one key area of focus for us is on uh, creative and digital literacy skills. So we advocate for teaching performance-based instruction, a performance-based assessment for ways in which we can really prepare students with these skills. We also have a really interesting research function, uh, in focus right now, research focus on readability in digital formats, where we've partnered with organizations and universities around the world to understand how can we make text that's digital, particularly readable. And we have some interesting ways in which we can do that, where we can adapt the font, we can adapt the size, we can adapt the spacing between letters and the spacing between lines. You, we've, we've also done research to try to understand is there one format? In fact, there's not. There are multiple formats that work for a variety of different people. So in our Acrobat tools, you'll see there's an option to use liquid mode which automatically flows your documents on your cell phone or on your mobile device to make it easier to read. This is ongoing work that we see broad applications for in your browser, whether it's in the ways in which students are taking tests, but to really focus on making text easy to read so that the, what we're trying to accomplish by reading text is even easier. And when a student is taking a test, what they're being tested on is not the readability of the text, but the content and the subject matter. This is exciting work, st still in early stages, but I look forward to, to sharing more with you about this work. And then finally, we advocate for ways in which students can be ready to launch their careers. And so we support both research and policy and funding that helps students demonstrate their skill and knowledge, um, particularly the skills that we know will be in high demand as they enter the workforce. I want to invite you to join us. There are lots of ways to dive into our thought leadership work and to our advocacy work. And I certainly invite you to join us at Max. Uh, Adobe Max is coming up in October. It's free, uh, it's available online, and a fantastic way to learn more about everything from our readability work, to hear more about our partnership with Khan Academy, to also learn more about the ways in which you can integrate Adobe tools into your classrooms and to your LMS, for example. Uh, I invite you to listen to the Creative Educator podcast. That's a place where uh, we've just wrapped up our first season with some fantastic educators and leaders from around the world reflecting on what it means to teach creativity and to teach these creative and digital literacy skills. We're just kicking off season two, but you can find us any place you listen to your podcasts. Just search for the Creative podcast. And then Matt the self-paced courses that are available in the Adobe Education Exchange. There's one in particular, all of them are related to our thought leadership, but there's one in particular that focuses on how educators, both in primary and secondary and tertiary education, can prepare students with essential creative skills. 
And then finally, I invite you to join in the Adobe Educator community. Many of you have already joined, but we would love to see you there to learn from your experience and expertise, uh, to see the kinds of things that you're working on in your classrooms, and to hear your thoughts and ideas about preparing students with essential creative and digital literacy skills. Thanks very much. Tacey, thank you so much. We really appreciate the time that you've put into this. I'm going to bring Erin up to the screen, bring you up to the top there, Tacey. Oh, there we go. We can see each other a bit better now. Erin, uh, tell us about uh, any discussion that was happening behind the scenes. Well, there is simultaneous furious discussions um, spinning through all of the chats between um, Matt and Brian and all of our educators <laughs> that are joining us out there. So it's pretty rapid fire. Um, Matt's been making some comments um, on the potential integrations between Spark, um, Creative Cloud and Canvas, Google Classroom and Microsoft Teams and Blackboard um, and the potential for extensions by bringing in edX content. Um, we also have a lot of questions being asked, like everyone's pretty excited about local sharing and the ability to share um, things through the Adobe Education Exchange. And um, we did also have a comment from earlier from Mark did, um, I think that's a little bit more directed for Matt and Brian though. I'm sure Tacey that once um, everyone has um, had a chance to take in what you said that there'll be some furious post <laughs> session comments dropping into the chat. Um, John Bowden says, thank you, Tacey, beautiful work. Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, Tacey, thank you so much. And we look forward to hopefully seeing you face to face in the not too distant future, but thank you coming all the way from San Francisco. And again, thank you to Brian and to Matt for this fantastic connection that we have with the global Adobe education team. I know we have all appreciated it. All the very best, Tacey. See you later. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Thanks for being part of the 2021 APAC Adobe Education Summit. Please share questions and comments in the chat and tweet about this event with the hashtag Adobe EDU Creative. Well, thank you very much for joining us for the start of the 2021 Adobe Education Summit. We will be back at 10.30 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time, which is 8.30 a.m. for Western Australia and Southeast Asia for the Adobe Low Lift and High Impact App Product Demo Session. Those of you who are watching us live from the Adobe for Education YouTube channel or any other social media platform other than Vimeo Livestream, to continue watching, you will need to move now to Vimeo Livestream via, and the link is there on the screen, bit.ly slash adobe-summit-live21. That's bit.ly slash adobe-summit-live21 because we're about to go off YouTube and off Twitter, but we will continue on with Vimeo Livestream. Just a quicker reminder to keep tweeting about this event using the hashtag Adobe EDU Creative and share comments and questions in the Vimeo Livestream chat. We'll be back live at 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time, 8.30 a.m. for WA and Southeast Asia. During the break, note the promotion for the Adobe Creative Educator program and other Adobe videos. We will see you later. Bye -bye. See you soon.
Oh, we lost Will. Oh, I imagine he might have just jumped into the other live stream, though. Oh, yeah, that's what we need to do. Should we be ending this broadcast? Yeah, we should. Yes.